For more on this, how the stimulus bill could impact stocks, let's bring in Emily Rowland, the co-chief investment strategist at John Hancock. Emily, welcome back to you. Hi, Melissa. Thanks for having me. The markets seem to be impervious to the delays that we're having in, in a coronavirus relief package being passed. Does this mean that you think that there's that this is not a catalyst, in fact, for stocks has, has you know, has not been the, the, the new the new bill that is or, or that the markets just simply complacent about it eventually getting passed? You know, in our view, fiscal stimulus as a catalyst is really fading at this point. And really what the markets are focused on is a solution for the virus itself in the form of a cure or a vaccine or a treatment in order for the economy globally to really get back on its own two feet here. And we think that creates a pretty challenging investing environment. Uh, there's more volatility associated with it. We almost think of the markets trading like a biotech stock in, in which when there's good days, you know, investors may be reaching for risk and then we get a pullback in terms of the timeline for a vaccine or in terms of, you know, the, the path towards a development and investors may get whipsawed on days like that. So we actually are very focused on really making sure that investors are staying disciplined in this environment. We think a balanced portfolio is a huge advantage right now. There's been a lot of ink spilled as of late on sort of the death of the 60-40 portfolio. We think it's alive and well right now. And so we think, you know, that having that balance and that discipline should allow investors to refrain from making so some of those mistakes that can easily be made when the market trades um, on, on one specific driver as it is right now in our view. What are you recommending in terms of tech exposure? Uh, because, I mean, it's it's really the biggest stocks in, in tech land that are making the new highs, that are pulling the Nasdaq up to new highs, that are dragging the S&P 500 along with it. Um, so do you say to balance away from those names or embrace that move? We've actually been overweight technology as a sector for over five years at John Hancock Investment Management. And, you know, we certainly recognize the great run that mega cap tech has had. And, and we certainly also recognize the concentration risk. But one of the biggest arguments out there is that this part of the market's very expensive. And if you look at forward P.E. ratios right now, the tech sector is trading at about a 16 percent premium to the S&P 500. That premium over time has actually been closer to 25 percent. Uh, so we're nowhere near tech bubble levels right now. You know, tech's trading at about a 25 uh, times forward P.E. ratio right now. Am I jumping up and down and getting excited about that? Uh, no, uh, but we're not excited about much right now, as, as most things across the board are looking very expensive. The other element here is we're just not seeing that kind of level of ex irrational exuberance uh, mm -hmm. creeping into the market as far as investors go today. Um, you're not seeing really excessive optimism. There's pockets of it, of course, when we talk about the rise of the sort of day trader, the Robin right. Hood accounts, that's there. But looking at fund flow data, investors are still sitting on a big pile of cash and we're just not seeing that yet. So we still like tech. Okay. Emily, great to speak with you. Thank you. Emily Rowland. John Hancock. Thank you. Brian Kelly, you've long said that the, the biggest risk to the market is the fiscal, fiscal stimulus package not passing. Here we are. Yeah. When is that a risk? I, I still think it's a risk. I'm surprised that the market is kind of shrugging it off. My best guess is that people are thinking, well, OK, a couple de day delay is not going to, to matter that much. But I just don't know what incentive the, the Democrats have politically uh, to really give in a lot here. So I think it go on longer than we expected. At some point, maybe the market cares. I think that's the biggest risk. I mean, if you look at what's going on in the economy, we talk about what's going on with tech, but something like the senior loan officer survey came out and it showed that, you know, the big companies, you've got all the money you want, but the smaller companies, lending is, is tightening. So if that continues to happen and you get people that are getting evicted and they no longer have $600 a week extra to spend, that'll eventually hit earnings uh, in the S&P 500. But until investors care about it, I guess it's a non-event. But I still think that is, you want to call it the black swan, the big risk, whatever it is, I still think that's the biggest risk this market faces. What do you think is the biggest risk, Karen? I mean, we just went through the first 13 minutes of the show talking about China and, and possibly China mm -hmm. retaliating against U.S. technology companies. Yeah, I think that's a risk. I think that's a reasonably high risk. But we've seen in the past the market sort of shrugs off 
some of the tensions between we've been this in this for what two years now of various you know uh, shots across the bow from each side and so that's I think that will happen we will see something like that I think to me the biggest risk is probably an upside risk of a vaccine quicker than people expect that's the the sort of black swan I guess to the upside people I think are discounting maybe won't be anything by the end of this year on a broad scale but um, if it happens sooner than that I think that's upside.